The radio access network is evolving with traditional and next gen networks set to run side by side for years to come. And one of the most important developments in this sector right now is the cloud RAN. Uh, to find out how some of the industry's biggest names are working closely together to make cloud RAN a reality for network operators, I'm glad to welcome Christina Rodriguez. Vice President, Network and Edge Group and General Manager of the Wireless Access Network Division at Intel, and Eric Parsons, Head of Cloud RAN R&D at Ericsson for today's fireside chat. So Christina, let's start with you. Uh, there's already quite a lot of momentum building behind Cloud RAN. Uh, what has Intel been doing to prepare for this acceleration? And what sorts of things are you seeing in the field? Well, we are seeing a tremendous momentum behind the virtualization of the RAN. Uh, pretty much every major operator has stated their intention to virtualize the RAN at some point. And uh, more importantly, we are seeing already commercial deployments happening this year. So super excited. This uh, obviously hasn't, hasn't, is not a, something that happened overnight. Uh, the, we have been working on this for more than a decade. Uh, it's been a journey, started at the core and now uh, extending that to the RAN to bring all the benefits of a virtualized uh, a platform. So you, you were mentioning what have we done to get ready for that. I'm, uh, you know, Eric and I, Eric, you and I use all the time uh, sport analogies. So I'm thinking for today, sailing, because I know you are a great sailor. Um, so you know how when you're gonna you're gonna go in a in a sail journey, you have to get that uh, cheap shape, right? In cheap uh, shape. So so I would say we did you know we did the same thing, right? We got ourselves uh, in cheap shape and um, started in, in both right how the amount of innovation and focus that we put on both the hardware and the software. For example, in the hardware side. Uh, coming up with the most advanced, uh, more optimized processors for uh, for the network workload, uh, focusing on the roadmap, bringing the capabilities that that we needed to have, and increasing the level of innovation. You take, for example, our uh, third generation of Xeon scalable processors, and uh, we can with that we can double the massive MIMO throughput within the same power envelope of a you know three by 100 megahertz 64 t 64 r so so best in class um and that's that's a that's a testament of the the amount of innovation into the roadmap so evolution not only of the microarchitecture, new instruction set and just capabilities specifically to the to the ran workload so that's in the in the in the hardware side. In the software side, also a lot of uh, innovation and efforts in the entire software stack. Working what we're doing uh, ourselves, working very closely with the ecosystem. We have, for example, our uh, Flex RAN uh, software, reference software that uh, allow our partners to get the most optimization uh, possible from the software hardware combination. So a lot of that uh, going there working again very closely with the ecosystem with the partners we see a lot of interest a lot of uh, momentum so i'm, I'm going to say that that the wind is in in our sail is in our back so that's uh, that's a good thing and of course it's the collaboration with ericsson which is uh, is going fantastic uh, so uh, eric um ericsson launched its cloud ran for mid-band solution earlier this year why is this the right time to be bringing this to market uh, Ray, that's a really great question. And Christina, you really picked a great analogy. As you know, I'm an avid sailor and it's a perfect fit for our conversation today. High performance sailing is all about ensuring peak performance as a team. But maybe we'll come back to that one a little bit later. But Ray, why now, you ask? And so there are several factors that come together for this to be the right time for Cloud Brand. First, we're now seeing the essential technology elements that are needed, namely the advancements in many, many core GPPs, the industrialization of RAN accelerator technology, packetized front hull, which is becoming more and more in use, and the maturing of cloud infrastructure for cloud for telco workloads. 
the technology is really the fundamental for all this to, 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 to happen. But second, from an operator perspective, we're seeing a drive to undertake the change that's needed, like redefining the sport, if we come back to that high performance sailing analogy, that is needed to move to COT solutions and to cloud native paradigms and to realize the potential gains that comes with that. And third, we're seeing a very vibrant ecosystem investment across all the layers of the stack, like the, the, um, the engagement that we're having right now with Intel, which is really needed to make sure that we get the innovation that we're looking for when bringing different ecosystem partners together. And Christina, given the complexity of RAN virtualization, what is the importance of industry collaboration in the growth and adoption of Cloud RAN? Super important. Industry collaboration is key. I, I always say that this is an industry effort. And uh, at Intel, we are strong believers on having a vibrant, strong ecosystem. And uh, historically and, and currently, we are working with uh, a, a tremendous amount of partners and, and the entire ecosystem being on the, the OEMs, the OSVs, the, the, of course, the, the providers of technologies and, and, and silicon and and, and the entire the entire uh, ecosystem working together to have the best possible solution, the most optimized solution. Uh, take for example our we have our Intel Network Builders program, more than four hundred uh, members uh, today working to have those optimized solution on Intel architectures. Um, and uh, there's more and more uh, focusing exactly on the on the uh, on the RAN. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that's fantastic. I uh, also, in the software side, similarly, I mentioned before FlexRAN and uh, just in general working with uh, the ecosystem for all the different, the different components. One of the things, I'm gonna go back to the sale, uh, the sale analogy, Eric. Uh, you know, a good, a good uh, sail boat captain doesn't ignore the ever-changing wind conditions, right? And that's, that's what we do, right? We, uh, we adapt at the new, to the new requirements. We uh, stay ahead of the new requirements, the needs of our customers, and uh, we work together with the ecosystem to address and go ahead and advance uh, the future and the, and the technology. So the combination of having a cloud-run architecture prepared for the future, working with the entire ecosystem, is, is simply enabling a lot of innovation, tremendous amount of innovation in the industry. Great, thank you, Christina. Now, uh, Ericsson recently launched its Open Lab in Canada. Uh, Eric, what is the goal of the Open Lab as it applies to the overall ecosystem? Yeah, so the Open Lab provides both a virtual and a physical space environment to share technology and create innovation. And it's really where we're showing our customers how to navigate all these new dimensions. And as Christina was saying, to, to manage the shifting winds. Originally, the focus was to co-create or co-explore with our customers new deployments, new use case scenarios, and the increased use of automation. And while that remains a central part of our engagements with the Open Lab, we're now seeing the benefit of using the Open Lab with our partners to co-create as well and to co-present towards the customers and the industry. Like for example, the recent Fierce Wireless event where we had Intel, Red Hat, in HP, in our lab, and on a virtual stage together. So in that way, yes, it's very much related to supporting a vibrant ecosystem. So obviously, uh, Intel and Ericsson are doing a lot of work together. Uh, Eric, what sort of results are you seeing from Ericsson's recent collaborations with partners? Yeah, what we're seeing is a bit of competition, which is really a good thing. And uh, going back to where we started in this conversation, really critical to realizing the types of innovation that I think the industry is looking for. At the same time, we're seeing great collaboration, the type of collaboration that is essential in bringing the type of solution that operators can count on for commercial realization. We're learning from each other, bringing the best of our capabilities and making sure it comes together reliably. In the end, as you know, mobile broadband is a critical service. Everyone counts on it every single day without any interruption. It has to work all the time. This is something that we at Ericsson have had to work with for many years now with our purpose-built portfolio, but we're now seeing so many others come to the table 
to make this happen from a cloud rank perspective. And uh, speaking of collaborations, uh, Christina, can you tell us about how Intel and Ericsson have been working together? Well, our partnership goes back uh, to more than a decade ago, um, not only working together on previous wireless generations, but just in general, general in the entire uh, network uh, segment, network market. <clears throat> more recently, we have been collaborating collaboratively very closely on 5G Cloud RAN architecture. Our common goal, common ambition is to bring our strengths, bring our innovation and put together leading edge uh, telco solutions and, and uh, you know, uh, bring that to the industry and, 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 and to, the, to the community. We were very excited this past uh, summer in June when Ericsson announced their expansion of their cloud RAN portfolio and uh, to, to include 5G mid-band uh, mid and uh, massive MIMO uh, uh, space deployments and uh, to hear that that portfolio is going to leverage multi-year, multi-generation Intel Xeon processors. So that uh, again make us uh, very excited. I think there is a lot that we are going to be doing together then. So uh, we're taking this voyage together and I, I, I believe we're making a positive impact into the industry. Okay, so uh... Intel and Ericsson are doing a lot together. Uh, Eric, what does the broader ecosystem need to deliver to ensure success here? Yeah, we need to work together on each other's strengths. Um, Ericsson comes to the table with a vast knowledge of planning and deploying 5G networks in the highest, uh, most intense environments. And we use this to help our customers and our partners roll out virtualized radio access networks tapping into the huge footprint and the huge mind trust that we've built as a company. But we're bringing, we're seeing companies like Intel bring their expertise in IT environments and chipsets and acceleration technology and their leadership in this space to accelerate the pace of deployments as we talked about earlier. We also need to be transparent. The overall ecosystem will be large. We need to understand how everyone will play together fairly and respectfully. But say most importantly, the ecosystem needs to be fully committed to this journey for the long run. Operators rely on vendors like ourselves and others to provide a strong technology roadmap that they can count on, that it will be there every step of the way as mobile broadband continues to grow at the pace that it has and becomes more and more pervasive in critical infrastructure applications or society at large. An example is exactly what uh, Christine was talking about, the collaboration we've done uh, to make sure that generation over generation, um, the Xeon uh, family will have the capacity that's needed to respond to that need. In the end, the ecosystem needs to work together. Like if we come back to, it, uh, to a high performance sailing team on foiling, uh, foiling boats, innovating every day, challenging each other to find the next opportunity and to be able to be counted upon by our customers really at every moment. Okay, so I mean, clearly collaboration, absolutely key for the development of next generation radio access networks. Uh, Christina, Eric, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. I'm gonna say goodbye with an old sail saying, may we all have fair winds and following seas. Uh, and Christina, really great to be with you again. And uh, yeah, that is absolutely so true. Uh, may the fair winds be with us. <laughs>